This is Dan Sullivan, the manager of the Engineering Sciences Failure Analysis Group in Sunnyvale. Today we'll be discussing dye and pry as a technique to look at solder attachments. At EEG Laboratories, we do a wide variety of testing, including electrical test, reliability testing, monitoring, ESD latch up, circuit edit, fit, and debug, failure analysis, and printed circuit board design and fabrication. Today we're going to be discussing one of these techniques in the failure analysis area. In this discussion, we'll be talking about dye and pry. In this, we clean your sample in order to remove debris and other flux and things that are get in the way of the ink's ingress to get into uh, the areas that we want to expose. We use a red dye. It's a machinist dye. It's an 18-molecule dye, so it's relatively small. Not quite as small as water, but it's pretty close. It's uh, able to sort of uh, act as a uh, surrogate to see where water and other types of things can get to and uh, do a damage to your sample. And what we do is we take your sample and we basically immerse it inside the red dye. And then we take that entire assembly and we put it into either a vacuum or a pressure chamber to basically move the dye around into all the cracks and separations and expose all the surfaces that are uh, able to be um, reached with the dye. We then fully bake your uh, device. This is very important. Uh, you need to bake it for two to four hours at the very minimum. You don't want to be able to then, at the end, pry the part and have the ink get smeared if it isn't completely dried. But once you uh, pry your part of, uh, device apart, you can check both sides and see if uh, the solder was uh, fully attached or if there's head and pillow or cracks in which the dye got into. And we're able to use a, a program that uh, designates different types of failures for solder and identify each of the different locations. One of the typical applications for dye and pry is to look at the BGA on top of a, a PCB board. And once you dye the part, uh, if you look at the upper left, that's the device as it is uh, received. And if you look on the right, it's after we've dyed it. So we've immersed it in red ink, and you can see the red ink has gotten everywhere. We then pry that device off the top of the PCB board, and we look at the solder attached sites. And on the lower left, you can see on the PCB side, you can see areas where the ink is fully covered where the solder used to be. And you can see areas where the solder uh, remains intact and is nice and silver colored or solder colored there, uh, showing that the ink did not get in. And on the far right, you can actually look at the BGA side, and you see the same thing. Uh, on the failed sites, the ink has gotten all the way in, and on the good sites, it hasn't. Now, this board looks pretty bad because we induced this. We actually did some uh, uh, modification of the sample prior so that we could show good and bad sites. Typically, a, a normal part wouldn't look this bad, you would hope. Now, in the last slide, we looked at a device that has solder balls. It's also uh, possible for other types of packages, like the PQFPs, that, that we're actually looking at the lead fingers. And so we want to see if the lead fingers are fully soldered down, uh, if the solder is intact, there's no cracks, there's no lifting. Uh, those are areas where you have weak bonding and they become reliability issues later on. And again, we'll take a look at the next page, uh, two pages, and we'll look at those kinds of failures. And here again, we have the as received sample in the upper left hand corner. And then after dyeing uh, in the right hand corner, you can see that the ink is pretty thorough, gets everywhere that it can possibly get. Once we pry the part up, you can actually see the fingers here. Now, sometimes the fingers will tear, and that's all right. That tells you you actually have good bonding there. But in the areas you'll see on the lower right hand corner, you'll see areas where the solder is nice and intact, such as on the lower left side there. And you'll see the ones in the center where the ink has ingressed and gotten into areas where the solder was not fully attached there. And there were cracks or, or uh, non attached issues there. And here we have an example of a TSOP on a BGA. Again, we have the uh, Azure Z sample after dye on the right. And then you can see the fingers where you have failed sites where the entire lead is red the entire way. So that, that lead was never really sitting down. And then you have the areas where you see the silver where that's actually where the attach was good and uh, the ink was not able to get in there and it broke there. And you'll see some of these fingers on the far right are actually broken. And that usually indicates that there's some good attach uh, there. And those are the little silver ones with the green arrow pointing to it. Whereas the long, full red ones uh, show that the ink's got all the way across. Those were never really attached. So dye and pry is a really nice technique. It gives you quick information on your solder attach or your, your or seals. You can also use this to test hermetic seals. Uh, you get to look at large number of uh, solder attaches uh, at one check, and uh, you also get to check a full seal area in one go. So it's not like doing a cross section. Uh, for example, if you have 20 rows of solder balls looking for an issue, you can do all at once and dye and pry. Whereas if you had to do 20 cross sections, that would take a long time and cost uh, an extensive amount. And you would only get to see that one uh, area in the solder ball uh, where the section was actually occurring. Uh, whereas with the dye and pry, you get to look at them all at once. 
Now, if DimePry indicates issues on, on your parts, you may have some additional samples that you could then go in and, you know, now that you know where the location is, the trouble say up in the upper right-hand corner is always where you have the issues in the samples you look at with DimePry. You could then go and, and target that area with X-ray or with a cross-section in that area. I uh, thank you for the interest in dye and pride technique. If you'd like to know more, uh, you can contact us at EAG Laboratories, uh, and uh, we'll be directed to uh, an individual that can help you with uh, whatever concerns you have. Thank you. Bye-bye.